Saw dudes, after messing around with Gauss again, I wanted to try out a frame that I haven't used much despite the rave reviews, Saren Prime. The mistress of Milady has had a chokehold on the meta for ages, and after testing, I can see why. Saren excels in all parts of the game, and like Volt Prime, can easily find a home in any mission type. Need to run through an exterminate mission quickly? Saren can be your speed demon. Need to defend a point in a defense or mobile defense? Enemies will succumb to spores before they get to breathe near the point of interest. Need to kill everything yesterday in level cap? Saren makes it happen. Just like my other videos, I will cover multiple build variations with their strengths. Let's get started. As usual, we're going to start with an overview of Saren's abilities. If you already know how the frame works, feel free to skip to the build section. Saren's passive is super simple and incredibly effective. Status effects inflicted by Saren's weapons and abilities last 25% longer. This goes for all statuses, which is especially useful for the damage over time statuses like Slash, Heat, Toxin, Electric, and Gas. Even for non-damaging status effects, this is great since it can crowd control enemies for a longer duration. Her first ability is Spores, where she infects an enemy target within 60 meters with 3 virulent spores for an infinite duration. Each spore inflicts an instance of corrosive damage per second with a 50% status chance. The damage will last until the spore is destroyed or the enemy is killed. Shooting or hitting the spore will cause it to burst, which regrows it on the main host and transmits one spore to nearby enemies within 16 meters. Spores can be spread if the initial target of the ability is killed, if infected enemies are killed by molt explosion, if enemies are hit while Toxic Lash is active, or if an infected target sickened by Miasma is killed. The spore damage will increase over time. For every second spores remains active, the damage per second will increase per enemy infected up to a growth cap of 7 enemies. If spores is active, recasting the ability on an enemy will consume 20% of the current DPS from the counter on the HUD, but reduces the energy cost by 50%. When there are no longer any infected enemies, Spore's current damage per second is instantly reduced by 20%, then decays at 10% of the new total every half second until it reaches the initial damage amount. Damage decay stops when at least one enemy is infected by Spores. Trust me, this ability is not too complicated in combat. Molt is Saren's second ability. Saren expends 50 energy and sheds her skin, cleansing her of all status effects and increasing her movement speed by 50% for 5 seconds. Her old skin is left behind as a decoy that draws enemy fire for 40 seconds. When first deployed, the decoy is invulnerable for 3 seconds, during which all incoming damage is absorbed and converted to its added health. The decoy will explode if it is destroyed, if its duration expires, or if the ability is cast again, inflicting 400 toxin damage with a 100% status chance to all enemies within 10 meters of it. Only one molt decoy can exist at a time. Saren's third ability is Toxic Lash. On cast, she expends 50 energy to imbue all her weapons with toxin damage for 45 seconds. While the buff is active, weapons deal an extra hit for 30% of the weapon's total damage as toxin damage, which has a guaranteed toxin proc. The bonus is doubled to 60% for melee weapons. Toxic Lash can make spores burst with every attack without the need for direct hits. Finally, we have Miasma, Saren's fourth ability. On cast, Saren expends 75 energy and spreads a viral agent, stunning enemies for a short time within 20 meters and sickening them for 6 seconds, dealing 150 viral damage per second with a 100% status chance on cast. This ability deals 400% damage to enemies affected by spores, and spored enemies that die while sickened by Miasma will spread spores. Now let's get to the toxic relationship Saren has with their enemies. At the start of a mission, infect an enemy with spores, then hit the spore to spread the infection, or cast Toxic Lash and shoot the enemy anywhere. After spreading the infection, activate Miasma to nuke them and further spread spores. Use Molt to cleanse status effects and divert enemy fire during this time. Recast spores as needed if the infection decays and recast Toxic Lash for the extra weapon damage and quality of life. Rinse and repeat. This Saren video features two main build variants. The first is a spore infection build and is meant for base deal path or defense missions. The other is the gunrunner or weapons platform build meant for endurance content. Please use the timestamps to navigate and view the alterations for each. Let's begin with the Spore Infection build. The aura for all builds will be brief respite since our main form of survivability is shield gate spamming. In the Exilus slot, I chose to use Power Drift for the additional ability strength and knockdown resistance. If you want more range, then sub it out for Cunning Drift. Prime Continuity ups our ability duration and allows us to keep our buffs from Venom Dose and Toxic Lash active for longer without the need to recast. Equilibrium pads out our energy economy, but does require us to use Synth Deconstruct on our companion to drop health orbs for energy conversion. I know my Equilibrium is not fully maxed, which is simply due to mod space issues. Please use a max version of the mod for the best quality of life. To increase our spore spread radius and miasma radius, we're going to use stretch and overextend it. To increase our outgoing damage, we'll use transient fortitude and umbral intensify. Even though transient fortitude lowers our ability duration, it's not a massive deal since we have prime continuity to offset it. If you don't have umbral intensify, you can use the normal version of the mod. 
To round out the build, we have Catalyzing Shields and Venom Dose. Catalyzing Shield sets our total shield pull to 74, which allows us to fully refill our shields with one cast of Molt, which also happens to cleanse us of all stats effects. Venom Dose allows us to hold our Spore's ability to grant us and our allies additional corrosive damage to weapons. With our current stat package, we grant a 154% corrosive damage bonus to allies within 35.25 meters for 51 seconds. This is massive for increasing damage and stacks with Toxic Lash for some insane killing potential. This build mainly focuses on base deal path survival and defense. I would not suggest carrying this build to level cap or high endurance content since spores scale slowly but decay quickly, meaning one slip up can reset your hard earned progress. The second setup is for the gunrunner slash weapons platform build. Now if you want to go into level cap, this is what you would bring. For this setup, you will subsume an ability over Miasma since it does not serve a purpose in buffing our outgoing weapon damage. Like the last mod setup, we have Brief Respite in the Aura slot and Power Drift in the Exilus slot. Brief Respite is for Shield Gate spam and Power Drift grants us a tad of ability strength and knockdown resistance. Prime Continuity extends the duration of our buffs from Toxic Lash and Venom Dose, granting us on-demand access to corrosive damage and toxin damage for our weapons. This will absolutely juice us out and skyrocket our DPS. Keep in mind that Archon Continuity does not work on Toxic Lash, it only works on the explosion from Molt. We will not use it because of the extra mod capacity it takes up, but if you want to go for it, go for it. Following that, we have Float to increase our energy reserves to 600. If you want to use the Prime version, be my guest. I use the base version of the mod due to mod space issues, but the Prime version might help you out in sticky situations. Equilibrium makes an appearance once again and helps with our energy levels. As usual, you will have to use a companion equipped with Synth Deconstruct to make full use of the mod. Fast Deflection increases our shield recharge rate and reduces our shield recharge delay, making us even harder to kill in endgame content. In the event we do not have energy to cast Molt, we can take evasive action and wait 2.68 seconds for our shields to fully recharge from zero. This mod acts as a failsafe if we completely run out of energy. If you want more ability strength, you can swap it out for Augur Secrets, but that is a bit unnecessary. To buff our, well, buffs from Toxic Lash and Venom Dose, we have Transient Fortitude and Umbral Intensify. With Power Drift included, this brings our total ability strength to a base of 214%, which is plenty to scale off of. As usual, we have Catalyzing Shields to take advantage of Shield Gate Spam and Venom Dose to grant our weapons corrosive damage. If you want to squeeze out even more damage for your weapons, consider swapping out Umbral Intensify for Blind Rage. This tanks our efficiency, bringing it down to 45%, and makes our ability cast fairly expensive. However, that is easily offset by our high energy reserves and equilibrium. The extra ability strength is handy in level cap where every bit of damage matters. That being said, I would consider having another source of energy regeneration just in case you happen to run out mid-mission. Because we rely on shield gating alone via brief respite, a dry energy pool is a death sentence. The final build variant uses Precision Intensify instead of Blind Rage or Umbral Intensify. If you lack mod space or general build flexibility, this is an amazing option. This mod only supplies an additional 90% ability strength to our fourth ability, but it's still very useful. Since this setup subsumes off Miasma, we can use any number of buffs in its place. For instance, we can use Roar, which grants a 78% damage buff with this setup. That doesn't sound like much, but this bonus is squared for damage over time effects, such as Toxin, which Saren applies with ease. Furthermore, using this mod over Blind Rage preserves our energy economy, meaning that we are less likely to bottom out our energy pool in risky situations. Saren benefits greatly from Helmet abilities, especially the Gunrunner variant of the build. The Spore variant can benefit from some abilities, but generally does just fine without it. The best Helmet abilities for Saren are Nourish, Roar, Zada's Whisper, and Gloom. For the Spore build, Subsume over Molt, and for the Gunrunner build, Subsume over Miasma. Nourish is a safe option, albeit one that can be outclassed. This ability offers viral damage, which is amazing since we already have toxin damage from Toxic Lash and corrosive damage from Venom Dose. The energy multiplier is put to good use on the Gunrunner build and offers an extra layer of security by padding our energy economy. However, it may mess up the elemental weighting on your weapons. Roar is my personal favorite. It's a straightforward damage buff that gets factored in twice for damage over time effects such as toxin, heat, electric, gas, and slash damage. Saren applies corrosive damage in droves, reducing armor and thus increasing the effectiveness of toxin damage. Roar double dips the raw damage from Toxic Lash, and triple dips the guaranteed toxin damage from damage hits. Combine this with a few Emerald Archon shards and there's not much that can stand up to you. Zada's Whisper is a void flavored Toxic Lash. If you want to hit heads consistently and have a bullet attractor effect, this is your best bet. However, if you don't have a specific weapon synergy in mind, I suggest sticking with Roar for the highest weapon damage potential and flexibility. Gloom is strictly for the Spore build and offers Saren much needed safety by slowing enemies down to a halt. This is perfect for defending a point since it lowers the enemy threat level drastically. However, since this is subsumed over Molt, you won't have a status cleanse. Be mindful of your positioning and use Toxic Lash to refresh your shield gate. 
Saren's best arcane options, regardless of the chosen build, are Arcane Aegis, Avenger, Energize, Ice Storm, and Molta Augmented. As usual, weapon-specific arcanes are also viable depending on your weapon loadout and preferences. Arcane Aegis is used in conjunction with Fast Deflection and provides more safety via shield gating. The additional shield recharge stacks with Fast Deflection, bringing our total shield recharge time from 0 shield points to 2.39 seconds. I realize that this change is extremely small, but the extra safety and level cap content is invaluable and could save your life more than once if you take any form of evasive action. Arcane Avenger is a plain Jane Arcane that buffs critical chance by a flat 45% on hit. Since the Gunrunner build focuses on gunplay, this is a nice arcane to further buff damage. Combined with Venom Dose and Toxic Lash, Arcane Avenger can score you super easy multi kills with very little effort. I hate recommending it, but Arcane Energize is an arcane you should seriously consider if you have trouble with energy economy. The extra energy on pickup can be a lifesaver, especially especially if you are unlucky with Eczema spawns or Health Orb spawns. This is not a mandatory arcane, but try it out and see what we think. Arcane Ice Storm is a niche option and can only be used if you're willing to use a weapon modded for cold or one that has a neat cold damage like the Epitaph. The extra ability strength and duration provided to us by this arcane is great and further increases our damage potential outside of our mods. The additional duration is also quite nice and reduces our need to recast abilities, thus reducing our energy strain. Molt Augmented is a mandatory arcane, regardless of what build you choose to run. The flat ability strength buff on kill is too good to pass up, and because Saren is so good at killing, it just makes sense. The additional 60% ability strength benefits our damage buffs and support damage, making it a no-brainer in base deal path content or endurance content. I usually run a combination of Arcane Energize and Molt Augmented, which allows me to remain comfortable in all mission types. If I'm running a cold weapon, I swap Arcane Energize for Ice Storm for the extra ability duration and strength. Tenet Glaxion with the Photon Overcharge mod takes care of the additional energy strain. Saren has two great options when considering focus goals, Matarai and Xenoric. Matarai is a caster frame classic. Power transfer grants a 50% increased casting speed for our Warframe upon switching from our Operator. This is not a massive change, but it does offer a great quality of life buff. The buff is especially nice for the sports build since it affects the long casting animation of Miasma. For the Gunrunner setup, this is still useful, especially for any helmet abilities you choose to subsume over Miasma. Sling Strength is a perfect pairing for this build. The extra 40% ability strength is snapshotted by our buffs, Venom Dose, and Toxic Lash. This means we can Void Sling twice, switch back to our Warframe, activate our buffs quickly, and reap the full benefits for the entire duration. The extra strength becomes even more important on the Gunrunner setup, which utilizes an additional buff of your choice, Nourish, Roar, or Zada's Whisper. Void Strike and Void Fuel are also pretty nice. Void Strike will mainly be used in level cap content, especially against Thrax units while in operator form. That being said, it is extremely potent for weapon DPS. Void Fuel grants us a 40% weapon efficiency bonus. While Saren doesn't have ammo economy issues like Gauss, your weapons might. This extra weapon efficiency can make Mouse 1 spam a bit easier, but keep in mind that the buff is only active while Void Strike is up. Xenoric is also a great option for Saren, who in my opinion could benefit from a little bit of extra safety. This focus school is all about energy generation, which Saren needs to abuse Shield Gate. Energy Pulse causes energy pickups to grant 50% additional energy over the span of 5 seconds, essentially causing each energy orb to grant 37.5 energy. Since Saren does not have any channeled abilities, the energy generation does not get interrupted. Inner Might allows abilities to be cast without energy or shields but requires 60 seconds to recharge. Again, this reduces our energy strain and allows us to refresh our buffs without much trouble. This perk is super useful if you choose to use Blind Range on the Gunrunner build since ability costs run high. Wellspring is great for energy generation. On cast, the operator creates a well of energy for 8 seconds, and allies that pass through the well are granted 5 energy per second for 30 seconds. For a caster frame such as Saren, this is a lifesaver. In between damage rotations or ability rotations, cast Wellspring to keep energy levels high. Hardened Wellspring is essentially a bargain brand sling strength, but it's still a nice bonus. Casting Wellspring inside of an existing one will increase its size, boost its duration by 20 seconds, and grant those inside a 20% ability strength buff. The energy generation plus ability strength buff is really nice to have, and can allow you to scale into endurance content. While I love Xenoric for how comfortably it plays, I would not suggest bringing it into Void Cascade due to the presence of Thrax units, which require high amp DPS. I can suggest this in Endurance Disruption, Defense, or Survival. The Archon shards follow the poison theme for the poison frame. I run 1 Emerald Archon Shard for increased corrosive stacks, 3 Emerald Archon Shards for increased toxin damage, and 1 Emerald Archon Shard for increased casting speed. I use the Tau Forge version for the bonus stats, but if you don't have them, don't worry about it, just use the regular versions. Put simply, a single Tau Forge Emerald Shard, the one for corrosive stacks, allows for a 98% armor shred. A 100% armor shred, while it sounds good on paper, is only a 14% damage bonus overall. You are better off using the rest of the slots to increase toxin damage since Toxic Lash has guaranteed toxin procs. As usual, the Amber Shard increases casting speed, which Saren loves to have as a caster frame. Ability Strength is sourced from our arcanes and mods, so we do not need to slot in any Crimson Shards. 
Now we only have weapon recommendations left before the video ends. If I'm being honest, Gunrunner Saren in particular can make almost any weapon feel amazing since you'll have a plethora of strong buffs active. So for this section, I'm just going to suggest weapons that I have tested and used and the reasons why I like them. Starting with primary weapons, we have the Cedo, Tenaclaxian, and Torridon Carnon. The Cedo is a great shotgun and benefits from additional status effects on enemies, essentially having a built-in gun CO. With Venom Dose and Toxic Lash providing it corrosive and toxin damage, we can build it for Viral Electric, which provides more gun CO bonuses and grants some light CC. Tenaclaxian is a new favorite of mine thanks to the Photon Overcharge mod, which increases critical damage and the drop rate of energy orbs. This Galaxian variant is already insane in the damage department, so the extra utility makes it top tier in PvE. Torrid and Karnon, I mean, do I have to say anything? It's basically a Death Star laser, and with Saren, it's the Death Star laser plus the Bubonic Plague. It'll shred regardless of what's in front of it. As for secondaries, my main suggestion is the Grimoire. Like the Tenaglaxian, it can assist in the energy generation, but this time through the Zata Invocation, which grants up to 10 energy per second for 20 seconds. The Grimoire itself does decent damage and can apply crowd control via electric procs, but with Saren, the damage will skyrocket. As for melee weapons, I like my trusty Prados and Guandao Prime. Prados offers parkour velocity and sprint speed, which every frame loves. It also has great attack range and benefits from the buffs given to it. Prados has the added benefit of working well with Melee Duplicate, which does work with Toxic Lash. Melee Duplicate will duplicate the damage instance from Toxic Lash, resulting in three damage instances. Guandao Prime is a crit stick through and through, and what it lacks in utility, it makes up for in sheer range and blender potential. Has great mobility, which Saren can utilize, and is an easy pick for many players. Okay everyone, that is it for the Mistress of Milady. I am sorry that the video took a long time to get out, and that it's a bit lengthy. Saren is a complicated frame due to her numerous weapon buffs, so I did not want to miss anything. I genuinely believe she is one of the strongest frames in the game, even though she's not my cup of tea. I prefer my speedy boys and juggernauts, but boy is she easy on the eyes. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any suggestions or thoughts, please leave them in the comments. As always, thank you all for watching, and happy farming. Stay safe.